Brothers and sisters, we're going to be making a series of videos on how Christians manipulate scriptures. Now, this is the first of those episodes, so tune in to more as we go along. Now, I want to read this to you. Jeremiah 11, verse 16. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair, and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it and the branches of it are broken. So let's look at, let's go down. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee, planted thee, has pronounced evil against thee for the house, for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah. Now I want to stop right there. The house of Israel and the house of Judah are this green olive tree. The olive tree is the house of Israel and Judah. I want you to pay attention to that now. The olive tree does not involve other nations. The olive tree, the green olive tree, was the house of Israel and the house of Judah. That's the first thing you need to know. Now, what I want to do now is I want to go back to the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 17. Romans 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, what branches? Israel. I want you to pay attention. And thou being a wild olive tree. Ah, and thou being a wild olive tree. You notice it says, and thou being a wild olive tree. It didn't say wild pear tree, wild apple tree, or any other tree. Paul says, and thou being a wild olive tree. Here's what the Christians say. These are the Gentiles. These are the other nations. No. But you know why they do that? Because it says wild olive tree. Wild. What is Paul talking about? Let's look at this. Let's, that's, this is how they interpret it. But let's look at the facts. Let's get the book of Hosea 8 and 8. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. Ah. For they, they, is Israel, are gone up to Assyria a wild ass alone by himself. Ephraim hath hired lovers. Ah, so the northern kingdom was considered wild. They were the olive tree, though, but they're wild. This is what makes the northern kingdom a wild olive tree, because we're looking at it. Well, let's go back to the southern kingdom. I want you to see this now. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 22. Though thou wash thee with nectary, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity. Ah, the iniquity. See, the branches were broken off because of evil, which is sin. Pay attention now. For though thou wash thee with nitri, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity, which is sin, is marked before me, saith the Lord. How canst thou say, I am not polluted? I have not gone after Balaam. See thy way in the valley. Know that thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary transversing her ways. A wild ass. Ah, so the southern kingdom and their transgressions became wild. But they're still part of the olive tree. Just because it says wild does not mean it's talking about other nations. The wild is because Israel and Judah together as two different kingdoms became wild. But let's go back and see what Israel and Judah was called. Jeremiah 11, verse 16, the Lord called thy name a green olive tree. Green olive tree. Let's drop down. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee, the olive tree, has pronounced evil against thee for the evil, which is the sin of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah. So the house of Israel and Judah were the olive tree. All nations were never the olive tree. Never. 
So when we go back to Romans, I want you to pay attention. Romans chapter 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, broken off, we already seen who was broken off. And thou, now this and thou, being a wild olive tree, who is Paul writing to? It, remember, the letter says Romans. But let's go back. See, this is why we, this is what we like. If he's writing to all sorts of Romans, Romans chapter two, verse seventeen: Behold, thou art called a Jew, and resteth in the law, and makest thy boast of God. Let, wait a minute. Now. We're going to come back here. We're going to come back here, brothers and sisters. Let me mark this. Let's go to the book of John. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 18, verse 34. The Messiah answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Watch this. Pilate, who was a Roman, answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Ah, so Romans wasn't going around calling themselves Jews. They weren't. A Jew was a Jew. This Roman pilot says, thine own nation, which means Romans, white people, were not the Jews. That's what that's saying. I want you to pay attention. Let's go back. Romans 2.17 Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. Ah, thou art called a Jew. Why, why again? Acts 18, verse 2. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Ah, so there were Jews in Rome. And if we go back to uh, Acts 22 and 3, I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia. So, ah, Paul was a Jew born in Rome. And what did he call himself? Acts 22, 25. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is Roman? and uncondemned. Paul was a Roman because he was born in Rome, so he was a citizen. Watch this. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. And the chief captain, they're still talking about Paul now, the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? And he said, Yeah. So Jews were called Romans too because they were born there. They were in Rome. So when it says, Behold, thou art called a Jew, Romans 2.17, and restest in the law and makest thy boast of God, Paul were, was writing to the Jews in Rome. That's who he's writing to. It's evident. So when you go back, now go back and look. Now go back and look at Romans 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, ah, you Jews, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them. See, this is how you break that down. There were wild Judeans, wild Israelites, northern and southern kingdom because of sin. And Paul was saying a scenario. He's Pay attention to the scenario. And if some of the branches be broken out, and thou being a wild olive tree, still an olive tree, not an apple tree, not a pear tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. What that's telling me is that the wild of Israel would be grafted back among themselves in the same olive tree and take part of the fatness. This has nothing to do with other nations. Nothing. Because it says wild olive tree. The reason why it's called a wild olive tree is because of the sinners of that tree. That's why they were wild, because of sin. Not that it was another nation. Get back, you nations. You're not getting in. You're not coming in. Wow, brothers and sisters, but this is how they interpret verses. 